1,650 kilometers, 22 competitors. A race of a different kind. To win, one must not drive fast, but economically at the auto-built efficiency run powered by Audi. One tankful is all they have. To make it from Basel via Innsbruck to Vienna and from there via Salzburg back to Switzerland in an Audi A4 TDI 2.0 like this. Basel on the Rhine, this is where the efficiency run begins. Thousands of readers of Autobuilt applied to take part, just 22 were chosen. Their adventure starts at a car park near Basel Airport. Editor Ralph Bielefeld tells us what questions the readers of his magazine are dying to know the answers to. What can I personally still achieve these days with the car I now have, or the one I may decide to buy? How can I make an active contribution to using less fuel? Those are the minor points I have to consider. And nobody knows better than Jan Becker, instructor for the Audi driving experience, what these minor points mean in practice. First of all, it means changing up in good time. There's an indicator in the car to tell you when to change gear. And of course, accelerate gently, don't drive too fast. We suggest a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour. No accessories, no air conditioning, of course. That's a bit tough in this weather, but I think they'll manage it. It won't be easy, but that's why we're going along too. So that nobody can accuse the participants of cheating, the filler caps are sealed before they set off. What can they expect along the way? Well, we're expecting a sweaty time in this weather, without air conditioning and without opening the windows, because that costs fuel. Will we make it? Only four litres per hundred kilometres is quite a challenge. Well, I'm a bit anxious about our consumption and whether we'll really manage the distance on one tank full. Take a deep breath and we're off. It's 32 degrees Celsius as the efficiency drivers leave Basel. The first stage to Innsbruck is a good 370 kilometres. The new Audi A4 has a 2-litre engine developing 88 kilowatts, that's about 120 horsepower, and it offers the best prospects of an economical trip. Under normal conditions, it uses an average of 5.1 litres per 100 kilometres, with CO2 emissions of 134 grams per kilometre. But the drivers will have to do much better than that to have a chance of winning. It's best not to look in the mirror too much, because I can see people are driving very close behind. And I'd say they're irritated by my driving style. Or they're just not used to it. <laughs> A good four hours later, the drivers reach Innsbruck and tell us their impressions of the first stage. It was incredibly warm without the air conditioning. Very hot. I feel a bit shattered, I must say. It was only a short run, but it was fun. The onboard computer was showing 3.8 by the end, so at the moment, we're making a good average. The second stage takes us from Innsbruck to the Austrian capital. While the drivers keep trying to get their fuel consumption down, Michael Dirk, a member of the Audi board, tells us about Audi's contribution to that. Audi can be proud that it's always taken the subject of energy efficiency very seriously. I would say we've managed to combine our sporty image with a claim of very high efficiency. And, of course, we haven't reached the end of developments there. We're really only just starting. For example, this year with the new Audi A4, we've reduced the fuel consumption by up to 17% compared to the previous model. An even greater potential for saving is the driver's right foot. Instead of rushing up behind a slower car, a practice fuel saver takes his foot off the gas in good time. The important thing is to keep enough distance to the man in front. Vienna, Schönbrunn, the grandest of the imperial palaces. Half time for us. After a total of 840 kilometers, the efficiency drivers have completed the second stage. Audi employee Andreas Metzmeier checks how well they've done and feeds the values into the computer. It looks as though the drivers have consumed between about 3.5 and 3.7 litres per 100 kilometres. That's certainly a very good figure. We weren't expecting it to be that good. It's very nice that the people have taken note of the tips we gave them beforehand and put them into practice and got such good results. The third stage leads from Vienna back to Salzburg and starts with a nasty surprise. A thunderstorm is brewing up over the city. Admittedly, it cools the air, but the wet roads mean increased rolling resistance and the fuel consumption rises. Luckily, all the A4s survive the hammering from the hailstones without damage. 
and the drive continues in sunshine. Mozart's birthplace, Salzburg, is the last stop before the final stage. The drivers have now covered around 1,140 kilometers. But the further they go, the more they like it. At the start, it was all a bit unfamiliar. But I really must say that you get used to it fairly quickly. You enjoy it, really, because you keep noticing the consumption is falling. And it's satisfying to see that you're still making very reasonable progress. The last stage takes us from Salzburg back to Switzerland to Zurich. The efficiency run is now entering its decisive phase. The participants still don't know how tight it will be at the end. They can't guess that just a hundredth of a litre difference will decide who's won. What can be said at this point is that all the teams will easily manage the round trip on a single tank full. And they'll all be clearly within the original goal of 4 litres per 100 kilometres. In Zurich, the efficiency run is at an end. The 11 cars are switched off for the final check. Which team has evolved the best strategy and released the lowest amount of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere? After a total of at least 20 hours behind the wheel, it's time to take stock. It was unbelievably strenuous. I never thought it would be such hard work to drive so slowly for three days. But it was also good fun. And I think we've all seen what potential savings there are when you adopt a gentle style of driving. An hour later, the results are announced. Basically, we can say there are only winners and no losers. I take my hat off to you all, and I can reveal straight away that it was a very close run thing indeed. Two teams came equal second with 3.45 litres of diesel per 100 kilometres. The winners were just the tiniest bit more economical and taken completely by surprise. We heard how the others had done and we thought, well, we'll probably be somewhere in midfield. Just couldn't believe we'd come first. By the way, the winners in the second efficiency run from Vienna to Basel and back again did even better. Their average consumption was only 3.32 litres per 100 kilometres, equivalent to a CO2 emission of 88 grams per kilometre.